video is sponsored by Printful. <sighs> it is about to be 11 p.m. at night, and I'm just now starting to pack for a trip that I'm leaving for tomorrow at 5 a.m. Classic Sarah, honestly. But when I'm packing a camera bag, the first lens I always choose, if not the only one, is a wide lens. A 16 to 35, 17 to 28. This has been a recent favorite of mine. This is the Sony G Master 14mm 1.8. See, so you got a little fish eye element. I just love wide shots. Now the 14mm, that's not the most popular focal length, but the 16 to 35 and similar focal lengths definitely is. And that's what we're gonna talk about in this video because one, well, I'm filming with the brand new Sony 16 to 35 f2.8, which I have been waiting for so long. But also, I just want to discuss the focal length in general and why it's worth it to maybe shell over the big buckaroos. Buckaroos? Why would I say that? It's late, okay? <laughs> Basically why I think this lens is gonna be worth it for a lot of people. Yeah, we're going wide for this video. Wide! I even rented two other wide lenses. Let's get packed up and let's head to Breckenridge, Colorado, because John and I are meeting up with my family. We haven't seen them since we moved from Texas, so it'll be nice, it'll be nice to see them. Also, we finally got up the neon peach, but I don't know where the transformer is and we don't have time to look for it. So that's all, ow! That's all I could do for you guys right now. This is everything I've gotten out so far that I want to bring. This isn't even everything. This might be too much, guys. This might be too much. It is now 12.45 in the morning. Took me way too long. But I got the laptop bag and the gadget bag ready for the plane. And we have so much camera gear in here. It doesn't look like it, but I got a lens in here, another lens. We got the drone, another lens wrapped in a rag. We got the A7S III. We got the new A7C II and the A7CR yeah, that's the name. More lenses, and we're ready to go. Well, I don't have my clothes packed, but that's like so low on the priority list now. Okay, we just arrived in Breckenridge, Colorado. The weather's beautiful. That's so nice. We've already been doing a little bit of hiking and I have on the 16 to 35 F2.8 G Master II. So we are talking all things wide lens. I wanna just play around with it, shoot you skating a little bit. I convinced my wife to come to the skate park with me. Yeah, it's always fun, <laughs> it's always fun. We have good construction ambiance going on. It's true. But what I haven't told you guys yet is I rented every single sony wide lens so this is gonna be a fun video i want to run through all the things that's like a mr b style i rented every single <laughs> it's only like five or six lenses but this is already like a, a very quick favorite of mine all right yeah uh, tricks uh, uh, skateboard time <laughs> Are you the famous waxer from YouTube Shorts? No, the funny one. <laughs> and so the biggest reason why I'm excited about the Mark II, opposed to the one, is 20% smaller and 10% lighter than its predecessor. I know that might not seem like a crazy amount, but it does add up when you're out on a shoot for a long day, when you're filming yourself, when it's in your camera backpack. Also, the minimum focus distance has improved. So it's gone from 11 inches to 8.6. It also has reduced aberrations, mainly due to only having one aspherical element opposed to three with the Mark I. You have better sharpness and contrast in the corners of your images. That's actually something that you often see in cheap for third party lenses. The general image is still really great, but once you start looking at the edges or maybe you start pointing the lens, you know, directly to the sun, you're gonna get some aberrations. You're gonna get uh, some just janky looking corners. The autofocus is improved as well as the focus breathing. So that's helpful if you're at 16 mil and you're going back and forth, you know, you get that kind of unpleasant focus breathing. So it has improved, but of course,
course, since it's a Sony lens, this is also going to be compatible with the focus breathing compensation that you find in cameras like the Sony a7 IV and a lot of the modern cameras that basically fix that. They do a little bit of a crop so you don't have focus breathing at all. Okay, let's talk about the lens physically on the outside. It has a lot of the modern G Master uh, quirks and features as Doug DeMero says it, right? So you have the aperture ring. This is really nice to just change the aperture directly on the lens. You can also de-click it, so say off, and then it's nice and smooth. Oh, how nice. This is really nice if you have a camera like an FX6 with an internal ND filter. You can basically go, oh, nice and smooth, change the aperture like that and change the depth of field while maintaining the same exposure with your image. You also have the iris lock, of course, autofocus, manual focus, and you have two focus hold buttons. These are customizable. Of course, it's also dust and water resistant. Resistant, not proof. So don't yeet this into the water or anything. Um, and of course, G Master lenses are going to be better weather sealed than other Sony lenses that aren't G Masters. Now I've been holding this because I've wanted to show you and stuff. I have a few more points, but let's actually switch because we've been filming with the 16 to 35 F2.8 G Master 1 and let's switch to the new G Master 2. Okay, so now we have the Mark II on the camera and Matt behind the camera has already said, oh yeah, wait, this is already looking different. It's looking a little bit better. Uh, we have the same ND filter on the top of the lens, so that hasn't changed. But yeah, that's something that I've noticed when Sony uh, upgrades a lens from five, six years ago, they go from a G Master 1 to 2. The colors are improved. Okay, last thing I wanna mention about this new lens is it has linear response manual focusing. Now, this is really key for you guys out there that do manual focusing. If you use this lens for photography, this doesn't matter a ton. It's mainly for video people. This means when you hop over to manual focus and you want to focus, say, from here to the trees, right? From point A to point B. And you turn the ring on the lens, you can turn the ring the same distance every time and it's consistently going to focus from point A to point B. Now if you didn't have this linear manual response focus, it's just it's a word salad, the manual focus would be inconsistent every time. It would basically focus depending on like the speed that you turn the ring, um, many other things, and so that means that Oh, if you want to hit that same focus point again, if you have that in your brain, I move it this far, you wouldn't be able to hit that point again. Did that make sense? It's one of those things that you know in your brain, but once you start saying them out loud, you're like, I don't know if that, did that make sense, Matt? Yeah. Okay, so I think I covered this new lens well. I still want to talk about something else. But before that, Printful, thank you so much for sponsoring this video. If you guys need to build a beautiful merch store with zero headache, zero risk, Printful is the way to do it. So we're going to kick it to Sarah in LA to let you know. we're talking. I'm sure you've seen this hat, this shirt. Okay, obviously feeling peachy with the neon peach up. I figured that would be good closure for you guys, you know, to, to say that the peach is up, but I didn't have it plugged in in the beginning of the video. It was just cruel, you know? But now, <laughs> and then the, the merch, this is what we're gonna talk about because, well, thank you, Printful, for sponsoring this video. Printful is a awesome print-on-demand service that allows you to create and ship products to customers straight to them without any upfront investment. They have hundreds of premium merchandise pieces that you can choose from, put your design on it. This Stay Peachy Trucker hat, for an example, as you can see, has really amazing embroidery on it. So not only can you do basic screen printing tees or direct-to-garment prints, but they also have embroidery. And why I actually already have all of this merch, and some of you guys might have it as well, is, well, I've actually used Printful for the past five, six months. I became became very intrigued when they announced their integration with Squarespace. This allows you to build your merch store directly into your Squarespace site. So you don't have to have one website to host your work and the other to host merch. It can be all under one umbrella. You can also integrate with Shopify, WordPress, Etsy, you name it. They have fulfillment centers all over the world, which means your products get to customers faster. And what's great, because it is print on demand,
and you don't have to worry about holding a lot of inventory and have it just sitting at a warehouse and you're paying those warehousing fees and you're nervous if you're gonna sell it all. This is just perfect, not only if you wanna get your start with e-commerce, but it's just great all around, even if you already have an audience and you wanna get designing and you want the products out the door because it is so quick and it is so easy to use. And I actually only mentioned this round of Stay Peachy merch at the end of one video because I wanted to make sure that I knew the ins and outs of Printful before I really promoted it. So I think we sent out like 30 or 40 orders and it has gone so smoothly and it's been really fun to just get to know the process, how easy it is to just drop a design, pick out the different clothing that you want those designs on. You can get samples with those designs on before you add the merch to the store, which I would highly recommend because for example, this was the first trucker hat and it just didn't fit very well on my head. The top was super poofy and it just didn't have as premium of a look that I wanted. So I ordered a few more samples and landed on this one. Oh my gosh, it fits my head so perfectly. I feel super comfortable in it. Trucker hats, you, you got it, you got to get right. And I just love this additional stitching in the front. You wanna make sure your colors are good. You wanna make sure the design looks good. Um, and Printful just takes care of all of that. Okay, I could probably go on and on about this, but hopefully the merch speaks for itself. I have had such a great experience with Printful. So whether you're an aspiring e-commerce business owner, or maybe you're a creator who wants to start making merch and do it without the headache, well, hey, you should start your Printful store today. Again, I highly recommend it. So all the information will be linked in the description below. And well, if you just wanna check out the Stay Peachy merch, it's like I said, on my website, saradici.com slash peachy merch or stay peachy or merch, one of those. I'm not doing very good advertising, am I? <laughs> Everything will be linked in the description below. Um, thank you for joining me back here in California, but I'm gonna spin it back to Sarah in Colorado. How's the lens going, Sarah? Is it going good? This is actually a different lens, so I don't know why I was. Anyways. <laughs> These are all of the wide lenses that I've gone through in search for the perfect one, which I think is perhaps this new 16 to 35 G Master Mark II, but I kind of want to go through these past lenses over the past four to five years and tell you why I chose one over the other, but also why one maybe didn't work. So let's start. Does this make you guys nervous? This makes me nervous. This is what happens when I try to film outside of nature, okay? I don't really know how to function out here. Let's start with the OG. This was the 16 to 35 G Master Mark I F2.8. It came out in 2017, so four, not six years ago? Did I do that? Yeah, six years ago, wow. And six years later, we have the Mark II. So as you can tell, it's a huge size difference, a very big weight difference. The Mark I is 1.5 pounds and the Mark II is 1.2 pounds. So I loved the look of this lens. I just, everything about it was great. But a lot of my use cases for 16 to 35 is, is vlogging and holding this guy out, it, it's a lot. It was just way too heavy for me. And so this is why this never works because of the price. You know, I was like, I'm not gonna pay over $2,000 for a lens that I find too heavy, and then I'm just not gonna bring anywhere. And then enter the iconic. Zeiss 16 to 35 F4. See, back in the day, Sony didn't have just like a infinite list of lenses. So they enlisted Zeiss to make a lot of their lenses. This is the tried and true. I can't tell you how many videos I filmed on this. You can, you can kind of tell it's beat up. This poor lens has been through so like, how, how do you destroy the Sony logo? And there's scratches, it's, it's been through things. But what was so great about this lens is it was a good size, it wasn't too heavy, but it also had OSS, optical steady shot. So when you combine the in lens stabilization with the active stabilization with some of these Sony cameras, it was just so good for walking and filming, or maybe you're filming something like skating like we did earlier, where it really helps to have image stabilization. So this was just this, very good lasts me like two or three years but you know I had beaten it up I can't really put a lens cap on it anymore and lenses that are f4 you're always looking over you know grass is always greener you're like I need f 2.8 I need that extra depth of field oh my gosh the beautiful bokeh right and so this is when I ventured into third-party lenses which I don't do a lot 
So Tamron and Sigma actually have really great 17 to 28s. The Sigma is actually a 16 to 28. And before the Sigma came out is when I was looking for this type of lens. So I actually landed on the Tamron. So look how small this lens is. So this is the Tamron 17 to 28. And this lens has been so fantastic for me. The price is great. And also it has that F 2.8. And I use wide lenses a lot to film tech and gear. So another great thing about this is it has a tiny minimum focus distance. So you can get really close to the stuff that you're shooting and it's just a really cool look. And more importantly, look how tiny it is. About to sneeze. This is what happens when Sarah is among green things, okay? And you know, when you're talking image quality, of course, you know, the Sony G Master is probably gonna have some of those uh, aspects beat, but this was just such a good bang for the buck. Again, probably gonna say that a lot, that this was my new lens. So I went from the 16 to 35 F4 to this guy, and it did me well for a long time. But one of the big bummers about third-party lenses, and this isn't the case all the time, but oftentimes the autofocus isn't as good. So a lot of the use cases, I'm vlogging, you know, uh, I'm not behind the camera where I can switch to manual focus. A lot of the times you need reliable autofocus and this would hit it like 90% of the time, but that extra 10% was just like, it was annoying, right? We only got two more lenses, guys. Hang in there with me. And then Sony released this lens. So this is their new 16 to 35. In a way, it kind of replaces this Zeiss 16 to 35 F4 because they're both F4. It's smaller, which is great. But this lens is unique where one of the biggest features is it's actually a PZ lens. So this is where you can actually zoom with your camera. So the FX30s, the FX3 have the rocker on the camera where you can control the zoom with the lens. Now, this is useful for some people but not for me so I saw this lens come out I said oh great it has the aperture ring it has a lot of the modern Sony lens features but I was like you know what still not for me I need something better enter this okay so this Sony 14 mil 1.8 G master is the most extra lens I've ever used and I think this is when I discovered oh my gosh how wide can I go because I love it I love wide shots um, you know I use this for some real estate stuff back in Texas it was just perfect it was perfect except this is where things got out of hand I started to film like all of my videos on this so I would just post up in my house and just okay set up the camera on a tripod using a 14 mil lens 1.8 and I think the novelty of having a super wide lens but also having crazy depth of field due to the 1.8 is what made me fall in love with this camera and keep using it but the downside is you're still using a 14 millimeter essentially like fish eye lens. So when you start getting comments on how like big your forehead is and how your proportions are a little off, like once you start getting those YouTube comments, you're, you're kind of like, and you know, you're squ squinting and resolve and you're like, my, my forehead does look pretty big. That's when I had to retire the 14 mil for a lot of shots. And so I still have it for beautiful outdoor stuff. And when I want tech to be very immersed in its environment, I still find a lot of use for it. But this led me to my third or fourth dilemma of still not being fully satisfied with a wide lens that can do it all. And so that, my friends, is why I am so excited for this new 16 to 35 G Master 2 F2.8. If you can tell, I'm actually using this to just like talk about gear. Cause if I'm being honest, this channel, if it was fully what I would want it to be, and I didn't have to worry about the algorithm, would be me talking just about like camera gear and lenses for hours and hours. I will say I'm seeing a lot of videos complaining about Sony and how they look too clinical. I feel like clinical is a harsh word because I feel like they're basically saying, oh, it's too sharp. Oh, the colors are maybe a little bit too vibrant, which is interesting. Like I haven't heard anyone call Canon too clinical, maybe because they've always had that Canon look, but I would compare Sony and Canon to be very similar. You start with your preference. Some people just love those Canon colors, although I would argue that Sony's colors have become so good. More times than not, when I'm shooting YouTube videos and I don't want to go through my whole like shooting log process, I'll just shoot in standard. Like I sometimes even skip over s Cinetone because uh, I have a good workflow with color grading with Film Convert and it just looks amazing. And so I found my workflow with that. Some people do with Canon. One big thing that I feel like Canon is ignoring is the size. Have you seen 
the, their fancy lenses, the sizes of those things, and their camera bodies. If you compare the APS-C versions or you know their spin-offs of their main full frame, you compare them to Sony. Sony has so many more portable options, and just this lens is such a good example of how the lenses just keep getting smaller while the quality gets better. So going back to that clinical look, what that means to me is consistency between lenses. I'm just always ensured that I'm going to have a consistent, nice image. I know I've said that word a lot, but with making YouTube videos, with doing interviews, with doing client work, like dedicated brand stuff that lives on other brands' channels, you know, I can just switch over to log, find a nice little LUT, do, you know, a few color adjustments here and there. Um, and I'm confident that I have an image that is comparable to a lot of fancier setups, right? This sounds like an ad, doesn't it? I'm not sponsored by Sony. And so I understand why people are flocking to all these cool anamorphic lenses and kind of some of these third party manufacturers. It's just, what are you doing? Are you making like vibey short films or like vibey travel films and that's what you're going for? That is fantastic. <laughs> I'm a big fan of just having a consistent good look and if I get my 24 to 70 G master with a 16 to 35 G master I do an a B cam setup they're gonna look very similar right okay so yeah I've been a little ranty I'm very passionate about cameras and lenses right but if you guys have any questions or if you want to make a comment on Sony's look do you hate Sony? Do you love Sony? Are you a Canon fanboy or girl? Do you shoot Panasonic? Do you shoot Black Magic? I've had my phases and all of those throughout my, you know, video career and they all do different things really well. And so, you know, to each their own. Maybe have a lively debate in the comments. That's what YouTube is for. But hey, I hope you enjoy this video. It's been fun to um, be in Colorado with my family. Like, subscribe, stay peachy. Okay, bye.